So thank you for the introduction, Anne, and thank you for being at this great school, trying to humbly share our experiences uh, in working with sustainability. Uh, working with sustainability with design as a driver. We are architects. Uh, we're not engineers, we're not archineers. We have to respect each other and work together. And how do we do this? Um, I think we have to go back in time, uh, 2,000 years maybe. Um, so let's push a bit button. Um, I was cleaning up in my basement the other, <laughs> the other week um, due to a renovation. And I, I found my, uh, my notes from the School of Architecture and the School of, uh, you know, the history of uh, the European uh, Western architecture. And I, I, all of a sudden I just jumped back to Vitruvio and his uh, claim of what is a beautiful balanced house, what is in a way a sustainability in an object. Um, and of course, the balance is a balance between beauty, uh, firmness, and utility. It is a balance between all the things that is going to take place all over time, the lifetime, the life cycle of a building. But that's just a building. So, well, with warm thanks to Norway, <laughs> um, we're jumping 2,000 years uh, almost in time again to another kind of sustainability. All of a sudden, we're not discussing objects. We're discussing s systems, larger systems, global systems. Our buildings is a part of a global system. How can we adapt to that? How is that an inspiration that uh, sustainability it's not just our own table. We are part of a large family. So this is my own statement. Uh, this is a sustainable house in a sustainable world. Um, and what I, I, I want to, to, to mention is that this is quite a statement. And this is actually what this is about for me, for my company, and this is what we have to work together to investigate. But again, Anna told us something about what is the background, what is the story for this. Uh, as you mentioned, we, we had the oil crisis in, in Denmark in the 70s, and of course uh, the demands um, pushed us and pushed architecture, pushed designs very rapidly into limitations. Because we made houses with smaller windows, larger, uh, smaller floor-to-ceiling heights, uh, thicker walls, whatever. People saw this as limitations. So why should we invest in limitations? Is that in development? Um, what happened as I think that the, the, in, Euro in Europe, is, as Anne said, there was this again uh, in the 2006-2008, demand of a reduction of 75% in energy use uh, in operations and buildings. I, I, I can only imagine uh, IT or something as uh, a, a, another um, profession having these uh, um, um, goals to gain. And so we had to, to, to think differently. How can limitations become something positive? How can this regain some of the things we lost? How can this become just design drivers in our buildings? What is happening at the moment is actually you have a skepticism in Denmark, at least that's my um, experience. It is that people have gone back to this has become very complicated. We got all the certification stuff, we got all the documentation. We are in Scandinavian countries sick and tired of documentation because it takes the time from being creative. So people are going back and saying, let's do it simple. Let's do buildings without engineers. So people are actually getting a bit apart again. I think it's a part of a natural process that you get together and you get apart. But what I'm quoting and what also uh, 
the lecture yesterday by by Norman, Lord Norman Foster was we have to get on to a holistic approach and we cannot do this alone. So I'm not getting uh, or stating any final answers, but actually getting back to my triangles here is all these elements here, and there might be hundreds more, are elements that are changing our lives. These elements are design drivers. Not in every project you have the opportunity to do all of them. I think it's impossible. We're not going to change all of this in every project. We have to collect and choose what is the potential working with these elements in all projects. So I'm, not, I'm going to show you, of course, some projects <laughs> uh, as, as we are practitioners. Um, but what I'm going to tell you is more like themes. I cannot go into uh, details with every project. But the first thing is, of course, the mythology of building houses, reducing energy by just design by 75%. The first example I wanted to show you is a kindergarten we made north of Copenhagen. And uh, it's a kindergarten um, made in a co collaboration uh, with Velox, which is a skylight uh, manufacturer. And they made a donation because they knew how, they, they had to have examples of how to pushing design into examples. So they made it in a donation, and of course the donation included that we had to use a lot of the projects. So when you had to do the competition, there were already on site uh, 50 different products from the family, a uh, uh, manufacturing family, that we had to use. And this limitation, in a way, became a creative thing in the process. Um, because the way we work, our methodology, uh, is actually working uh, programmatic and parametric with things. We haven't got a special style of architecture that we are committing, committed to, but we are actually working open-minded with getting all the parameters and choosing together with the engineer, together with the client, together with all the demands we have to, to face, to choose. In this process, just to show it quickly, we worked again, as actually uh, was mentioned yesterday, in another triangle, the energy triangle. So again, the shaping of, of a house, the orientation of the house, the program of the house, of course, uh, um, the uh, program of the spaces in the house, and the building components, and on the top you have the technical appliances and the technical state uh, that your houses are in. So what you can see here is actually we ended up uh, doing a triangle and the triangle is actually giving as, as much uh, facade facing southeast and southwest and orientating the functions in the house. You can see it's almost like a cashba or a, a small little town for kids where well, they can run around uh, when the weather is not very nice and it's, it's raining a lot in Denmark, like in Norway and Sweden. <laughs> so there's a lot of indoor uh, in-betweens that we're investigating. So the, the project is actually about taking these parameters and making it into architecture. I'm trying to push again. But so this is an energy section, as we call it. Um, this is how the different choices become architecture. Uh, as you can see, we're working with lots of parameters, both thermal insulation, uh, thermal mass, natural ventilation, loss of daylight, a um, uh, high uh, level of, uh, uh, of uh, daylight uh, melting, uh, technical appliances that helps the house 
uh, work. Um, and on this top, it's like this house has to be an active house. This has to have an energy, this is an energy surplus house, which as you can see in the, in, on the one side, you can see the need of energy to run the, and operate the house, and you can see the energy production on the right side. So you can see we actually have a surplus of energy uh, by the uh, performance roof, as I will uh, show you afterwards. Um, but actually, the gain is is is, is reached um, by reducing and optimizing choices and making it into architecture, and then adding this surplus as a production. This is a, a picture from the, the south uh, easterly corner, and as you can see, this roof is oriented 30 degrees south, 20 degrees north. So you actually have daylight, you can see this uh, PV and the uh, skylights are melted together. So you have the sy uh, this system of the house actually having the energy coming as both uh, uh, electric, or you call it short and long wave uh, energy uh, and collecting it. And this creates a whole different kind of of facade and and uh, and uh, and design, uh, because all of a sudden you have different heights inside the spaces. So you can see here. Actually, we have the roof as this uh, performance roof, but because of the roof being placed into an angled triangle, it creates all these different spaces inside. So all the spaces are actually in plan. Uh, the groups, for instance, uh, for the kids, are actually equal in plan, but the section creates the, the differences inside the space. You can see it here, how the spaces uh, uh, vary through the house. The house is very deep, but even though the daylight percentage is up to 8% deep inside this house, and it's driven with natural ventilation, through a house with a depth to um, up to 50 meters. What I'm going to tell you about now is something different. This is just how do you work with a client? Um, so this is a DTU, the Danish Technology, uh, the Danish Technical University, north of Copenhagen, and we won a competition. And the competition was about uh, creating a new office house. All these houses are, I'm showing you are near, nearly zero houses coming to energy performance. But this is something interesting because we made this house in the competition, and the client saw uh, the potential of changing the program from just offices into being a, a program with both student centers, PhD offices, offices and auditoriums. Because what we did was doing a micro campus, as we call it, inside the house. We actually took the structure of the campus and compressed it into a house. And what is very interesting in this house is that the in-between in the house becomes a potential. Uh, it's uh, amazing going to this house because it works 7-Eleven uh, and what is going on is it's almost an X-ray house because all the walls are glass through it. So when you stand on the different levels, you have the possibility of see, seeing the students working there, the teachers on top, the auditoriums, and the house is totally open. Everybody is moving to each other, meeting each other, and there's a huge exchange going on. When I'm there, I was there that last week um, with a, uh, touring some people, and I think it was a grey day, a Tuesday, and there was 300 people in the house working there, and students and so on. The largest pro problem in the house was actually that the bins were not large enough because of the pizza trays the, through the weekend because people just squatted almost the house uh, and it shows that the client was saw the potential of the house and changed the whole project into something very very positive this is the auditoriums and you can see as we call it somebody called it the facebook house uh, it's totally transparent when you look through the house 
as the time is going very fast, uh, I'm, um, I'm going to show this. This is a landfill area north of Copenhagen. We're doing a, a huge metro system and all the this uh, air soil digged out uh, from, from both the metro and a lot of construction work in Copenhagen at the moment is creating this new island uh, uh, part of Copenhagen. And we made the first uh, house. This is the house where they, um, where they actually um, handle the soil. So this house is a house where you have blue coats and people in blue overalls working together. Um, and the concept of this house is, of course, that in 10 years or 15 years, the landfill will stop. So how do we uh, deal with this? We de dealt with this uh, by doing this as a flexibility inside the house. Of course, we have some areas that has to have different uh, uh, performances, but inside we did the uh, the actually uh, the in internal as a, a piece of furniture that you could take down and do something different afterwards because the lifetime of the house was just probably 10 to 15 years. So the last project I wanted to speed through is um, a small uh, sports building and uh, cultural house just next to the School of Architecture, as you've visited so many times, Ali, uh, as you can see down there. So the area is a very old um, naval area uh, with red wooden houses, barns, and so on. And what we actually had here was we had to, to there was a previous project, and we had um, to, to actually just uh, detail this project. And we told the client, this old project is not able to perform uh, in energy use and in indoor climate and so on in a, no, in a modern world. Uh, and uh, the client said, I'll give you three weeks to do some, come up with something different. And we took our mythology and worked it through. So this is now a sports hall, which has a lot of daylight, natural ventilation, blah, 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 blah. It's a near zero house. But on top of that, uh, we used the driver of sight, the driver of connection to what is there already, being able to respect nostalgia away or history. Um, and that's what, why I showed it. The, another thing that's very important in this house is, uh, again, connection. Um, as you can see, you have a bicycle lane, as was mentioned in Copenhagen. We've got bicycle lanes all over. We've got a very uh, a slim, uh, narrow side. So the thing is actually having uh, elements in the house, as you can see in the gates, working as as, as blinds, that things in the house has to have different functions. You cannot have a decoration. It needs to have a function as well. It needs to be a shade, an opening, something that gives meaning. And this is just a picture of the, of the, of the um, environment that is created. Uh, you got the bicycle lane, you got the connection with the water, the inside, and you got football pitches uh, in the back. And uh, you can see here how, again, natural ventilation, daylight. We have 5% daylight in a sports hall. Of course, we can dim the light and shade the light, but it saves a lot of energy and it gives daylight quality in the space. It shows the materials in a far more a uh, natural way, uh, and it gives transparency and openness into a function that is normally totally closed to the public. Here you see the house, how it changes through the day. And here you see how the house has been taken to, uh, into the community. Um, there was an architect living next to me, and uh, next to the house, who wrote to me that it's, it's, it's amazing there's no graffiti on this house. There's graffiti all over because there's a free town called Christiania next to it. And she said, I think it's because you're giving something back that we didn't have. That's why we respect it. It's a part of the family. So just to stop, I uh, think the true nature of sustainability actually goes beyond the question and answering the question. So it's questioning the questions that is the true nature of sustainability. 
And uh, to do this, we have to work together because no house is an island.